Yes, and welcome to my seventh episode in my Christmas calendar series. And this time we are getting a bit uh, practical. We are um, trying to make something to work on the breadboard. And I'm also doing a presentation of one circuit that I always have coupled up on my breadboard. And yeah, it will speak for itself when we uh, start with that. Hope you tell your friends about this uh, video series so I will get some more uh, views. My most viewed video in this series has not passed more than, yeah, it probably not passed 100 yet. So I um, hope to see more of you in my next um, episode. But uh, now let's uh, get to the breadboard. I have prepared something for you here on this uh, digital trainer. And this is a very old board. I had it for ages and ages. And what I have done here is that I have two switches. These switches are hooked up like so. I have um, soldered some leads to them and I marked one of the sides. And I put a 5 volt lead to this one and an earth wire to that one. And that means when I change the position here, I change this to 5 volt and this to ground. And if I'm lucky, I'm going to get this back in like so. And that means that I have two switches that I can use to switch something on and off. And I have also this um, uh, coupling that you have here. And this is basically just to show you. Because when you have a, a TTL circuit like this, especially the LS74 logic, you do have the situation where you are not going to pull much power if you are pulling it from a high level. So if you have a gate here, yeah, just show an inverter for... That's what I have here so that you can see what we're talking about. And if you are going to drive this like so, we have a resistor here to limit the power. A LED like this should have about... Differs from the color and the sensitivity of the LED, but from 2.2 to 1.3 volt to light up and the current through it will light from about 3 milliamps to about 20 milliamps. I have some really old ones and these are not very sensitive and I do have some some new ones like this one. This is a multicore LED that's highly sensitive. But what I'm getting at here is that if I wanted to light up a LED I do have to provide the LED with the output from a low source. And that means if I got a zero there and I get a one here, this one would go down to, yeah, not enough current and not enough voltage to drive the LED. So this is just information. We will go into a data sheet and look more of this in, in detail later. But what I have actually done here is that I have not connected this as so. I have connected this. This was not very good TV, I think. I have connected this. Like so. And that means when I provide a zero here, I will get a one. And this will not light up. When I provide this with a one, I will get a zero here. And this will be drawn to ground and this will light up. And that means I will get a light when I provide a 1 here and not the light when I provide 0. And that we can test actually here. I can take this input for this. Uh, can take the input here and pull it high. No, open input is of course high. But this is... Yeah, I can of course put in this resistor here that I had. And this will pull this low when I'm not connecting anything and that means I will get a high like so and I will get a low like so. So this is my detection circuit and this is actually a 7414 and that's an inverter with a Smith trigger. I will only show you the important gates here and I'm only using the first gate here. So this is pin 1 and this is pin 2 and this is connected to ground by a 2.2 K ohm resistor and that is to 
make this always low if it's open because if I leave this floating in the air it will detect as an open input and then the light will light up if I don't ground it but this ground will take care of that and here on the output I do have actually as it is now I think I have two resistors 150 ohm and one 560 ohm and this is going to the LED like so like so and as you can see this light is really bright and you will even see it a bit dimmer on the screen than I see it in real life if it's not visible good with green light I can change this to blue or red if I want to so this is a ground circuit and that I'm going to keep in some form or other here to show the outputs and what I'm going to do today is another circuit that we talked about earlier. I'm going to um, continue on the same sheet even though it's getting a bit messy. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to construct this and this is that we saw yesterday it's the X or gate and I'm going to construct this by using NAND gates and I'm not going to show you exactly how this is done because I'm using this as a simplified formula but I'm just going to show you now what I'm actually going to make and we are going to use uh, 7400 that uh, we agreed on was one of the most uh, popular components and what we are going to do here is that we are going to connect first one gate like so and then I'm going to connect one gate like so and one gate like so and then I'm going to connect these two together and add this one and then I'm going to combine these two in a fourth gate and that will be the Y and this will be the A and this will be the B and by this I'm going to use a whole 7400 and I'm going to construct an XOR and we are going to test it by this this rather uh, simple construction I'm not going to bother with much of a color scheme or anything so you're going to see here I'm going to use all these color wires this is old wires that I had from yeah I had this for many 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 years and they're not retired yet and I'm going to use this this is a 74 with the LS00 version and I'm going to put this down here and we are going to turn off the power it's 5 volt and I'm going to connect first VCC here I'm using black and, and red wires that was 5 volt connected and then I'm just going to connect this up like you can see here I'm going to, um, to call this A and this B I hope means this was B this was B and this was A and I'm going to connect this like so and that was the input And here I have my sketch from the 7400 and as you can see this has the inputs here, inputs here, output, output, input, input. So here I connected one of the inputs on the first and I'm also going to connect this on one of the inputs and I'm using the fourth gate on that. And this was this connection here and then there is going to be this connection from A to the other input on this gate like so, so that is this connection and then I'm going to go to the output on that and output on that to the third gate and this was these two, and then Y is the output and I have this one and this is the output from my LED and it was not long enough so I'm just going to join it like so and if I'm going to turn this power on again 
I can see straight away that something is probably not right. And why is that? Yeah, because both my switches is in the same position and I do have a light here. Let's see if the switches does anything. Yeah, they make the light stronger. I'm going to go through my coupling now and see what I've done. I have one input from one switch to pin 1. That is that one. And I have one input from this switch to pin 2. I have one from pin 2 to the other gate. I really can't find anything fault with this coupling, so I do think I'm just going to start all over again and see if there is some bad contact on the other thing that is making this not working. It's better to start anew than making sense of all my rubble here. These are two are easy, and this is this gate here. And the output of that gate should both go to that gate and that. That means that I'm going up here with one pin. And it also means that I'm going to the other input from the same. This is that. So now both these are connected together with this one. And then I need one direct connection from A to the one up here. A to the other input here. And B to the other input on this one. And then I have connected everything in front of here. And then I need the output of this one to go up to the last gate on one of the inputs. That is this one. And we also need to connect the output of that to the other input. And that should be everything. And then I need one output from here to go to this one. That is the input to my detector gate. And it still does not work. But basically, we are probably going to do something much uh, simpler. What if I just test all the gates on the uh, NAND gate? Yes, and here I have to uh, interrupt you. This video is getting kind of long and I actually have a, a deadline. I'm trying to uh, complete uh, one uh, video each uh, day in this series, so I have to cut this in, in two. I'm uh, sorry about that, but otherwise I would have to skip a day on my video schedule. And then I think it's better to have something each day. So what we learned here is that we had a circuit. We did have a 74 LS00. And it was not performing how we thought it would. It might be the breadboard, it might be some oxidation on some wires or the breadboard. This particular breadboard I have used from time to time, but of course a lot of the wires has not been used in years. So I do have to do some deoxidation maybe and other stuff, but the first thing we are going to do, and that we are going to continue with tomorrow, is that we are going to set up the truth table for the 74LS00 to test if that chip, particular chip, is working uh, as it should. And of course we could have used the retro chip tester and we could have used uh, my other testing tool to test this. But why bother when we have the breadboard and we do have the logic gate to give us light when we um, have a, a 1 and dark when we have a 0. So um, that's what we are going to start with uh, tomorrow and we are going to start straight in and we are going to do some theory later on in uh, the episode 48. So thanks for watching, hope to see you again tomorrow.